This is the centre of Victoria. I'm in Bendigo on the edge of the Greater Bendigo National Park and it is a place of extreme beauty, these beautiful ironbarks, but also of an extreme climate. It's really cold here in winter, it's low rainfall, and in summer, well, it is baking hot. But despite that, it is also a place to grow incredible plant species. This is Marilyn Sprague. She's a legend of the native plant world. And personally, she's a bit of a hero. 10 years ago, she retired from the native plant nursery she'd run for decades. And now, she's using her accumulated knowledge to grow cut flowers in her large bush garden at home. What led you to growing Australian plants? Oh, I think I've got a passion for Australian native plants. They grow well. I started doing revegetation work and that really drew me into growing local plants. Tell me about the garden in general. Well, it's big. <laughs> You're, you're a firm, you used to grow plants to sell yeah. to other people, now yeah, you grow them for right. yourself. That's right, yeah. It's a wildflower garden, so yes. only Australian native flowers as cut flowers. A lot of the plants here are Western Australian, aren't they? Some are, you're right. How the heck are you growing West Australian plants here? By grafting many of them. Tough roots, pretty top. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I don't have the deep sandy soil that they have over in Western Australia. And when I had the nursery, um, we would get some of them in as, as potted plants and we'd have to say to customers, look, it's not going to grow in our rock and clay. Uh, we don't have that deep sandy soil, so just keep it in a pot. Yep. But uh, all the time I was thinking, mm, that could be a candidate for grafting. And so I've been experimenting with all the different rootstocks that I could use and then I do grafts onto the top of the hardy rootstocks. That one there is a cross between a Chomalacium and a Verticordia. It's called Paddy's Pink. So hardy. That's a cross genus between a yeah, wax flower and a Verticordia. Yeah, yeah. It's unstoppable. And the other thing is, because it grows so, so well, it's very good as a grafting rootstock. So I notice the garden beds are raised yeah. here. Is that yeah. for the cultivation? Yes. So it's rock and clay underneath, yep. but with sand mulch on the top. The beauty of doing a sand mulch, apart from water going in when it rains, is that it reflects light and warmth back through the foliage, and these Western Australian plants just love that. That's how they grow, naturally. Show me what's down this path. Rightio. Well, kangaroo paws, for a starter. They're looking amazing. Some wax flowers. Um, a lot of gorgeous things. And I notice, like, you're sort of growing cut flowers as a mm. farm, but this feels mm. much more like a garden. It's a garden farm. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you'd have to say that. I love this citrus-coloured kangaroo pool. Really, really gorgeous. As a flower, so unique. Well, it is. Yeah. The kangaroo paw, everyone knows what it looks like, but have you really looked at one is what yeah. I often... Yeah. I use them as my Christmas tree. I put a whole lot of stems in a big urn. And then I put some baubles on it. <laughs> I've got some little blue wrens, I put them on it. And oh, I tell you what, it looks great. This is gorgeous. Yeah, it is. Chrysanthemum? Magnifica. And I imagine once those flowers actually fall, the sepals yeah. are just as beautiful. Yeah. Well, you know how well Westringias grow well here. Westringia, Winyabi Jam, and that's what it's grafted onto. Really? Yeah, yeah. And people probably have a Winyabi gem in the garden. Yeah, so they could start doing a graft straight away. All they need to do is just get a little bit of material. Not when it's flowering. You know, new growth is hardened off a bit. Mm -hmm. And then off you go. And this, is this burgundy or copper yeah, glow? Or? Copper glow. Look at the flowers up in there. That white with this colouring is just gorgeous. Do you have things flowering all through the year? I mean, I a lot do. of people think yeah. wildflowers are just spring. Yeah, no, they're not. No, all year I do bunches, bouquets of flowers. Marilyn's garden farm is absolutely stunning and she's keen to share her innovative approach to propagation. Tell me what we are making here today. Radio. Well, we've just collected our um, Coria glabra. This is our rootstock and this plant here is a local native plant. And then we've got um, Galasnaria varicosa. They're both in the same family and so um, we're going to put, be putting this on this. 
And so this is a local plant. You know it does well here. Yeah. You know the roots are happy in your soil. Yeah. Whereas where does this one come from? WA. Mm -hmm. And the material that we're after will be between here and there okay. is where we're, where we're after. So when you say you can just pull them off, does that mean you would remove the leaves with snips or something on yes. other sensitive? Otherwise, yeah. If, that, um, if you'd removed some leaves and it stripped down the, the stem, ripped it off, well, that's not good at all. Okay. Yeah. So you do need to make sure that you know your plant, you know your plant and what you can do with it. I'm going to get rid of all of that. Wow. Yeah. So one set of leaves only. And then I use the microscope to get in here a bit closer, like so. Oh. Right here. So, and then I'd also take off a bit of that leaf. So that's what I'm left with. That's my rootstock. Then I can rip down this here as well. So that is, that's our scion. That's what we want to grow. That's right. Okay. So I'm wanting the new growth um, at the top. Mm -hmm. to draw the um, nutrient, the, the moisture and so on right through so that it wants to keep growing once it's joined. And so then back to this one here, I'm just going to cut it now like so. So that's about, about 10 mil down, yeah, about a centimetre? like that, yeah. And I'm going to do about the same with that. I'm going to take a bit more off. So just making a wedge, so it's yeah, just a wedge, wedge graft? Yeah, it's a wedge graft. There we go, perfect. Okay, and so that into there. So I have to line up the cambium layer of the Gelasnauia as well as the Coria. So you're just making sure that on one side it's really yes, flush. That's right, that's right. So this is my um, tape. So you're just wrapping that, that's just like yeah. a normal batting tape or, yeah, or something? Yeah, that's right. Okay, that's it. That's it? That's it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And into the hormone and then into the tray. In about six weeks, I should have roots down here. And if that's got roots, then you'd be confident if this yes, is still green. Yes, and you'll start to see growth on there, yes. And do you remove the tape then? No, no, you just leave it. Just leave it? Yeah, it'll disintegrate, yes. Huh. What is your propagating media that you actually slide that into? It's um, perlite and vermiculite. So it's holding lots of moisture but also lots of oxygen. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I reckon what Marilyn has done here is pretty amazing. She's growing, of course, such an incredible range of species from this place. But then she's applied her gardener's knowledge and her want to grow species from a totally different part of the landscape here. It's really, really technical horticulture, but it's also incredibly beautiful.